Starting this summer, an autonomous vehicle called the Pathfinder is going to start trials where it takes two people from Milton Keynes train station to a shopping centre about a mile away. It's going to drive around pedestrianised areas instead of on the roads and in a couple of years time it could well replace getting a taxi or taking your own car. We've come to the Imagine Festival in Milton Keynes to find out more about the future of autonomous vehicles on the UK's roads. Self-driving cars are all the rage, but instead of adding autonomous features to existing vehicles, a group of UK companies are working to bring fully self-driving pods to pedestrian areas in the next few years, and testing will begin in Milton Keynes this summer. What the UK has to do is make sure that we become an attractive place to test this type of technology. So we've got a real opportunity to do that. We've got a fantastic regulatory framework that allows us to do that. Lots of other nations haven't. The UK didn't sign the Vienna Convention, which allows us to test this type of technology on our roads, providing we've got a good regulatory framework in place. But also I think there's a real appetite to make sure that we do open up the borders to allow this testing to take place. It attracts good organisations to come here, help develop their technology and grow this space for UK PLC. The programme will take many small steps over the coming years and the goal is to have a fleet of pods which will be hailed via a smartphone app and used to collect people from Milton Keynes train station and take them to a shopping centre one mile away. But when will this dream become a reality? Probably not that too distant in the future. So this work, you wouldn't be able to, to do that with this particular programme. So this one programme is going to go on for a year or so. And the idea is that it wouldn't be the main aim of the programme to work on the mobile technology for ordering a vehicle. However, the ambition with the next programme on from Lutz Pathfinder, which is a program called UK Auto Drive, very much is the ambition that we enable the technologies to not just allow the vehicles to operate, but if you want to get in one, you, ha you can order it and it comes to get you and it takes you where you want to go. Plus the ambition with that particular program, where there's going to be 40 of these pods operating in Milton Keynes, is that we would try and, at the end of the trial, make sure that there isn't a driver in the vehicle, um, that there is uh, purely autonomous driving taking place. If all goes well with the Pathfinder project, UK Auto Drive will switch up a gear and work to bring automation to regular cars, before developing systems where vehicles can communicate with the cities around them. For sure, within Auto Drive, which is a, which is a three-year programme, so we'll, we'll be finishing mid-2018, we have an ambition to have passenger cars which can be autonomous some of the time, fully autonomous some of the time. Our programme is, is based in, in cities, so it's, it's not motorway driving, it's an urban project, so these will be vehicles that, uh, that will be demonstrated and trialled in, in the cities, basically. And there will always, you know, we always recognise that there will be some conditions in which the vehicles won't be capable of being fully autonomous. But, but as I said, the, the goal, you know, the top of our mountain, the goal is to have vehicles that can be operated fully autonomously for some periods of time. The technologies are all there. Um, some of the technologies are mature enough to be moved from the testing grounds, from the proving grounds into, into commercial operation and to be demonstrated. Um, other technologies around the communications side are waiting for some enabling infrastructure to be in place potentially. These technologies won't compete directly against taxis. It's, it's a new player in, in the space. So they're, you know, they're not going to replace all the buses in the city and they're not going to replace all the taxis in the city. This is just going to be another form of public transport. I think, again, even, even in a pedestrianised area, there'll be, there'll be mixed emotions about this. You know, some, uh, some groups, some stakeholder groups, uh, are very frightened about this idea. They're, they're, they're worried about additional vehicles on the pavement. Um, but then other stakeholder groups think this is a, a great thing to have because it will enable them to be more mobile than maybe they are at the moment. A crucial part of developing autonomous cars is teaching them how to interact with an environment built for humans. This is where advanced artificial intelligence and deep learning come into play. The road environment is set up for humans. Um, you know, if you take a radar, a radar bounces off metal. Not everything on the roadway is metal, there might be plastic bollards and what have you. So the road environment is fundamentally set up for a human driver. Our system, um, as, a, as a deep learning neural network, is delivering machine vision rather like a human being. We're teaching the computer to see, and we're teaching it to see the sorts of things that we're looking for. We're looking for um, objects of interest, we're looking for pedestrians, we're looking for bollards, we're looking for traffic lights. So absolutely, it's all about um, seeing like a human being almost, and interpreting its environment like a human being. It's about knowing those things are there. So if there's a, if there's a pedestrian in the road, and you're travelling towards that pedestrian, you want the car to stop. 
Now you can either alert the driver with an audible warning or you could in fact just apply the ABS. But fundamentally, in the longer term, you're right, it's about interpreting that environment and making inferences. So if you're driving down a road and the car knows that it's um, bounded by sidewalks and there are pedestrians and there are parked cars, there is a chance that people could walk out between those parked cars. Although the Pathfinders will begin testing this year, fully autonomous driving on roads is still a long way away. But the goals of eliminating traffic accidents and making our roads more efficient could well be worth the wait. The utopia of having uh, fully automated transport is actually quite a long way away, you know, certainly more than a decade away. But in the meantime, between now and then, there are lots and lots of steps that need to be taken to finally get to that point. And the reasons why we're doing it, you know, lots and lots of good reasons. Safety is very, very important. Something like 2,000 deaths a year, 95% of them caused by human error in the UK alone. If we can reduce those numbers, then we're seeing lots and lots of benefit.